Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Emana Amawe. Coming up on the program today. The Federal Executive Council holds valedictory session for former Minister for Solid Minerals, Dr. Kayode Fayemi. Cross River State unveils new technology to produce high yield rice seedlings. And group holds rallies for and against the Senate president as police continue investigations into the Ofa robbery incident. Welcome to the program that brings you news from the length and breadth of Nigeria. The Federal Executive Council has held a valedictory service for the Minister of Mines and Steel's Development, Kayode Fayemi, as he takes a bow from President Buhari's cabinet. Fayemi announced his resignation as minister last week and says he needed more time to fully prepare for the July the 15th governorship election in Ikiti State. Kayode Fayemi is the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress. He was appointed Minister of Mines and Steel Development by President Muhammad Buhari in 2015 after serving as governor of Ikiti State for four years between 2011 and 2014. A federal high court sitting in Kaduna has granted the former governor of the state, Ramalan Yero, and three others bail following the arraignment by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for allegedly laundering 750 million Naira PDP campaign funds. The presiding judge, Justice Mohamed Shwaivu, admitted Yero to 1 million Naira bail and two sureties in Lysam and a landed property in Kaduna State. The judge also granted bail to the former Minister of State for PA and... No, yeah, former Kaduna State PDP chairman Haruna Gaya and the former secretary to Kaduna State government, Hamza Ishak, all who are standing trial alongside Yero in the sum of one million naira and two sureties in Laksam. Former Governor Yero and the three accused persons remanded, were remanded in prison last Thursday. The prosecution counsel had expressed fear that the defendants are likely to jump bail if granted to them, but the presiding judge overruled the argument and granted the accused persons bail while they are expected to deposit their international passport to the court registrar. The judge, however, adjourned the sitting until September the 26th this year for hearing. And Cross River, State Cross River State may just be the place to be for farmers who want to learn new technologies to grow high-yield rice seedlings. The specialized farming is being practiced at the Ayade Rice City Project, located in Calabar. The state government is excited about the project, saying it's the future of rice production across the country. The Ayadi Rice City project began about two years ago, following the state's plan to boost agriculture. With series of work and inspection at the project site to ensure contractors meet the designed concept and offer best rice seedling center in Africa, the project has today become reality. Now the farm has begun the cultivation of a special breed of rice seedlings with a specialized transplanter. The transplanter, according to the state government, has the capacity to grow more seedlings in a much easier and more exciting way for upcoming farmers. It's so precise that it can transplant within millimeters uh, per perfectly every time. It brings our yield from three, three ton per hectare up over nine ton per hectare. Beyond rice farming, the plant offers end-to-end -end services, including extension services and advice on source texture, preparation, cultivation, harvesting, and packaging. What has happened is that there's, we get more educated, we have less farmers. And the aging population, which is the farming population we have, is dying out fast. And there is no replacement program for farmers because the educated people will not want to go to farming in a way and manner that our parents and grandparents did. And so if I don't upgrade to a digital farming to attract young people to return to farm, by the time the people who are 60, 75 years get out of this world, we would have had no farmer. And for a visiting colleague, 
technologically driven farming in the 21st century is the way to go. I have seen somebody that has moved a step further because um, providing the requisite seedling that can give you uh, high yield uh, per hectare of land is, is, um, is, is the way to go. And that is actually the raw material that can drive the revolution we are looking for in rice production. With its motorized method, the rice seedling multiplication plant is one that will no doubt turn around the economy of the state and also encourage more people to go into farming with agriculture made pleasurable. Away from agriculture to the environment, experts are appealing to the federal, state and local governments to come up with a legislation to deal with the menace of solid waste, especially plastic pollution, which has become a threat to the ocean and marine life. This was brought up during discussions on solid waste management organized by the Ogun State Government in partnership with development partners. The environmentalist also called for more awareness to be raised amongst the public on the dangers of plastic pollution and practical action plans to restore the environment. It's a call to action from all of us to combat one of the great environmental challenges of our time. We all know plastic is a common household item that we use on a daily basis. And for us, it's something that we cannot do without for now. But there could be ways in which we can administer its uses. And that is why issues like this are very apt on a day like this. One million plastic drinking bottles are purchased every minute. The statistics are all over the place. They are all on the, on the internet which you can check. Every year, we use up to 5 trillion disposable plastic bags. In total, 50% of the plastics we use are single use. We don't reuse them. We don't recycle them. We just use and don't. So if we keep on at that rate, at that, cont that control figure, if we keep on at that rate, in another 20, 50 years, we'll probably have nowhere to sleep. Or that has to sleep on plastic. <laughs> Use less of plastic when you go to places, reject plastic and try and reuse. More stories now. The governor of Nasarawa State, Tanko Al Makura, is talking tough and he says there will be no mercy for anyone who disobeys the law or perpetrates violence in his state, irrespective of his or her status. The governor was speaking when he visited the troubled Omasha community where violence recently broke out between the people of Basa and Egbira. The feud between Basa people and Egbira people is still lingering in total local government area of Nasarawa State, despite efforts to mend bridges. The most recent is sparked by crisis that erupted between the two tribes in communities along the borders of Kogi and Nasarawa State. Total community was attacked for giving refuge to those who fled and settled here, a situation which prompted this visit by Governor Tanko Almakura. The chairman of the community, who says that many have been killed, several houses burnt, property destroyed and over 12,000 persons displaced, wants more deployment of security operatives. Many lives have gone, several houses burnt, properties destroyed and over 12,000 persons displaced. Right now, as I'm talking to you, innocent people are still deserting their homes. Some residents prefer a way out of the crisis for the entrenchment of peace. Bring the elite of these two tribes together. Let them sit down and talk. Let people know what is their main reason for fighting. The way out of this crisis is to unite for peace. If the peace is not there, if the peace is not there, you will, you, yeah, there's, there's no development. The governor expressed his displeasure and vowed to deal with perpetrators and law offenders no matter their status. The law is not a respecter of anybody, whether you are a traditional ruler, whether you are a legislator, whether you are a commissioner, whether you have a lot of money as a businessman or, or a scholar. You are only respected when you respect the law. 
In spite of the presence of security personnel, many innocent people are still deserting their homes for fear of the unknown. This underscores the need for warring parties to sheath their swords in the interests of peace. When the program returns in a moment, we'll bring you updates on the rescheduled Kaduna local government elections. Just stay with us.